All right, so this was what we looked at last time, right? This is that we checked uh, last time. We saw that Black played f5, very clever idea by Kostenyuk. In this way, she was able to start a strong attack, counterattack on the king side. She didn't worry about uh, this pawn being taken. We had a look at this last time, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, was it maybe rook g8 and then land with f4? Or did they play in a different way? Uh, yeah, I don't remember 100% how the course of the game was. Um, but I think in any case, uh, Rook G8. Oh, J Rook G8 was the move, says Amazon. All right. So I think that makes a lot of sense. And we could see that actually it was Black who benefited from the opening of the king side. So very smart move, uh, F5. Um, very nice way of thinking. We don't really care about that pawn being taken. We're interested in starting our own attack. And we saw also that G6, maybe this is White's best choice. But after that, Black can simply reroute the bishop and continue their uh, attack on the king side. Yeah, White has a lot of gaps in front of his king, says Titan Chess. You're right. White is somehow, I think you say in English, uh, overextended here. White has, has somehow overextended their position. So probably Black is better here. But OK, we should always be a little careful, of course. Um, all right. So uh, again, very welcome, everyone. And welcome to this uh, last uh, installment about pawn play in chess. We have uh, a few examples here waiting for us to be checked. I wanted to start with an example that I saw very recently. Uh, Spanish Grandmaster David Anton played a very nice game in the Czech Team League. Uh, those Team Leagues, I think they're always interesting to, to check those games, uh, very high quality games in the Bundesliga, German Bundesliga, in the Czech League, uh, Spanish League and so on. So that's where I found our first example for today. Let's see what David Anton did with the black pieces in this example. Let's flip the board. We have a new user, Kiambu. I'll add them to the room. I hope Greg is uh, okay with that. Let's hope so. So yeah, here we are. You're playing with the black pieces. I would like to know how you would continue here. Please remember that today's topic. Yeah, it looks like White has uh, placed their pieces in the wrong way. But uh, actually, White's, uh, I can tell you what happened here. Black, White played bishop b3, Black played c4, and White played bishop e1. They, they didn't want to take on g6. So that's why the pieces uh, appeared like that. It's not Fisher random or anything. It's exactly what happened in the game. So yeah, let's uh, bring this up. You're playing with the black pieces here. I would like to know how you can get a big advantage. I'll quiz you for the next, uh, yeah. Four, game, four moves, sorry. I think that will be enough. So please go ahead. Good luck, everyone. Try to get a big advantage with the black pieces using very clever pawn play. Take your time, uh, guys. Uh, I gave you almost two minutes, so take your time, okay? How can pawn play be involved here? Oh, all right, we have a few winners here. Titan Chess, Strategic Skimmer. Aha. Uh, that's an interesting plan also, Girir, Amazon, Pikachu. That's a traditional plan that you're um, carrying out. That's a perfectly possible plan also, um, just that there is something better. All right, Chess Samurai, you got it also. Uh, interesting idea, Tori Chess. Oh, we have a lot of pawn moves. <laughs> so most people move uh, some pawn. I think all the pawns have been touched here so far. Oh, that's an interesting move. I, I like your idea, Medina Tiger, but I'm afraid that White perhaps won't take it, right? They won't take your bishop, but that's an interesting idea. And Mega Charles Rex, you were very close also. Uh -huh. All right. So we have so far four winners, three winners, sorry. Titan Chess, Strategic Skimmer, and Chess Samurai. And... Uh, some people are very close also. Uh -huh. Yeah, Mega Charles Rex, you are really close. Uh, you don't need that much violence, uh, Mega Charles Rex, I think. On your fourth move, you already have a very promising position. So we don't need to, uh, to spice it up that much. 
All right, so time's up. Uh, Titan Chess, uh, you were the fastest one. So please go ahead, Titan Chess, and uh, let's uh, see what Titan Chess has to say. So Bishop takes B1. There is only one reason why Black takes on B1. Uh, you'll see it next turn. So that's the pawn move that we wanted to play. Yeah, I know, Amazon, there are other pawn moves also. But this is the strongest one. What I didn't tell you, I mean, what I didn't mention at the very beginning was that Black's king is safely uh, castled while White's king stays in the center. So this is a perfect moment to strike in the center. Those of you who play the French, for example, you know about this idea, of course. Actually, I think this is a Karo Khan, but it has some kind of French uh, uh, properties, this position. So g5, very strong move in order to open up the game. We can see here that if I take on f6, um, where is Titan Chess? What happens to Titan Chess? In that case, exactly. Like Titan Chess is saying, we take advantage of the fact that the white pieces are camping on the back rank. Yeah, camping is probably the right word. Here we can see that the white's position is already collapsing. We can pick up this pawn next turn and so on. In the game, they took the other pawn. No, if they take the other pawn, by the way, Titan Chess, of course, we take that pawn and we open up the game. Yeah, this is easy to understand, right? Black will have a very strong center. By the way, I hope that later today we will come back to this same very interesting topic of fighting for a strong pawn center. Um, all right, in the game, just to see what happened here, they played knight e2 instead. Black uh, took on f4. I think this is a good moment to take because they can then adjust their plans according to how white will take back. That's what I call flexibility. We want to see how they take back. If they take with the bishop, we can actually just take that pawn, right? Uh, Titan says, if we can take it, we should take it probably. Exactly. We can later on protect it perhaps with the bishop. Or you can play if you like to play safely. Perhaps you can start with bishop uh, g7 also. But uh, I think we can take take this pawn and there is some, something with knight e3 coming up also and so on. On the other hand, in the game, they took with the knight. And here on the other hand, we should be careful about this pawn. So we should play rook e8. Because th like, it's like a time bomb, right? Sooner or later, it will explode. White's king is not safe in the center. So... In the game, they took on, um, let's see here. I think they took on f6 in the game. Uh, yeah, they took on f6. There are still ways we can lose this game. For example, by playing e5. I'm sorry, Titan Chess. I understand that's a very intuitive move, but you actually lose the game if you play like that. Don't do that. Uh, I have knight xd5 and knight xc7. I'm, oh, you have queen 6 Oh, interesting. No, no, maybe you're right. Oh, no, no, it's with check, right? Yeah, so I'm saved here. Yeah, this I'm fortunate that... You can't take on h1 because you're in check. Yeah, good point, uh, Titan says. So, yeah, don't play. I understand. e5 is, of course, what the position is screaming for that move. But uh, it's better to take on f6. Uh -huh. uh, right. So, yeah, that's how the game went. g5. Now everything is right for your plan, Titan says. Now we can do it. I mean, you can also play knight e4. That's exactly. So, just for the record, you can also play knight e4. It's probably a good move also, but maybe with some queen g4 and you have to check some tactics and so on. So e5 is very clear cut. Here you can see that we are fighting against the king in the center. Uh, white uh, has used, used problems here. They play knight e2. The rest is not so important. Uh, yeah, white took on, black took on d4 uh, after g takes f6. They played d takes e3. Black was a pawn up, queen g4, king b8, castles, and... You can guess the last move here, right? Uh, Titan Chess. The last move is not very difficult. You would play this in a one-minute game. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, probably that wins also. Yeah, in the game, they just played Bishop C5 to keep some more flexibility. So, right. Black is much better here, and they went on to win. Very nice plan. Very nice play by uh, David Anton. He managed to unlock the white pawn chain, so to speak. When we speak about pawn chains, usually we speak about pushing c5, attacking the base, and things like that. However, we can sometimes attack it also in this very nice way, like some kind of uh, yeah super attack at the pawn chain. Maybe we should speak quickly about the other moves that uh, you were saying here. Some people are saying b5. This is perfectly possible, of course, to push b4. I'm not sure what white would play against that, but my uh, guess would be just to cast it away. Having seen what happened in the game, it seems it's never too early to castle here. So. Probably white will castle away. 
Uh, this plan with b5, b4, I would also say it's better suited when we're castle short because it's not clear that you really want to open up the queen, the queen side if your king is sitting on that side of the board. Um, f takes e5 was suggested. I think white takes back. Here we can see that it's much more difficult to fight against white's pawn center unless we're going to sack on e5, which uh, it's a tactical matter, right? Is, is this, if this is your plan, you will have to check moves like queen d4, for example. And uh, yeah. I'm not sure if this uh, works out. Uh, please let me know if you notice something, but I can't see it clearly. Um, another interesting move, bishop e4 was proposed. If if I take, I guess I open up the default for you, but maybe white can castle here. I guess that's what white will always try to do in this game. Uh, any other move, maybe? Any other uh, move that you would like to look at? Um, somebody said bishop takes an h5. That's also a typical Karo Khan plan. Uh, but having seen the game, I'm pretty sure that white would play g5 here. It looks very ugly, but uh, maybe that's what white should play. After all, the knight has to travel a long way to get to f5. Amazin is saying queen takes e5. When is that queen takes e5, Amazin? I don't follow. Not here, right? Or in some other position, maybe. Yeah, sorry, I, I wasn't checking the chat. All right. So, yeah, bottom line. I think uh, once you see the picture that white has the king in the center and their center is still a little shaky. This is the right moment to uh, play g5. H Henry Arshaw says g5, f takes g5, f takes g5. Uh, after h5, g5. Oh, oh, okay. Let's see. After h5, g5, we should take on g5. And then we should take on e5. Is very interesting, says Henry Arshaw. All right, Henry, I'll take on e5. I guess you take back and I play... I can see this nasty threat also, but I'll play queen d4. Uh, don't you think I'm alive here? Oh, queen d2 says Wacky Hill. Yeah, yeah, but, but I can see the chippo coming. I can see I can see it's in the air. So I better put my queen on d4. Also, I'm interested in swapping queens. Yeah, but it's interesting. Yeah, I think I'm alive here, most probably. So hats off to David Anton. This was a very pretty way to shake up uh, White's uh, pawn center. All right, let's uh, continue. Uh, speaking about uh, such uh, structures, let me show you something from uh, a few years ago, English Grandmaster Matthew Sadler with the black pieces. So one of the opening variations where we can get to this kind of situation with a G5 uh, thrust, it's in the French uh, Taras. So I wanted to show you something from uh, the French Taras, uh, we don't have to speak so much about the opening, but uh, I think this game is, is very nice. So uh, this is the variation that I'm speaking about when you play Bishop E7, and Morosevich, uh, French, uh, call it what you like. Uh, maybe somebody's playing this here. Anyone? Do you have this in your repertoire, perhaps, with black? Or you know it with white, maybe? Oh, you do, Amazon. All right, so you probably know about uh, the following moves here. Black is waiting for white to commit. Will they put the bishop on d3 or a knight on f3? That's basically what black would like to know without before they take the next step here, whether to play knight f6 or c5. Oh, you played a nice game as white. Yeah, who knows? Maybe one day we can check that game. I, was in. I hate playing French, says Titan Chess. To me, it's a bad version of King's, King Indian. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, French is, is complex now. It's a complex opening. When I was a kid, I always had big difficulties playing against the French. It was my worst, uh, I mean, enemy opening. It, it was the opening that I had most difficulties with, playing white. Uh, okay, then I switched to d4, and I didn't have to worry about the French anymore. Anyway, let's have a look here. In the game, they played knight f3, and now that the knight has settled here, black plays knight f6. They just play in standard French uh, style. So you can see the point here. Those of you who don't play the, this with black, you can see the picture here. Now white cannot use this setup anymore. I mean, if we had played knight f6 instead, uh, very often white puts the knight on e2 here so that the other knight can go to f3. Yeah, this is main line in the French Taras. Okay, safe to say there are also uh, players who play the sharper move, knight f3. That can be a gambit, for example, if black is about to take this ball. Anyway, that's a different story. Let's have a look at the game. Bishop e7, and after knight f3, black now commits to the pawn chain battle, closed center, because they know that white cannot put the knight on e2 anymore. Let's continue here. Bishop d3, c5, c3, knight c6, castles. And here, those of you who play the French. Anyone? What does black play here? 
Uh, yeah, queen b6, I think, is the old move. But no, I think in that case, uh, uh, Santos, Wacky Hill, and Amazon, if you play queen b6, you're actually mixing up the two systems. Correct me if I'm wrong. But you have played bishop e7 and queen b6 together. I think you play them either one of them or the other one. All right. So, yeah, please, uh, Amazon, stop uh, spamming. No, I, I don't manage to read everything if, if you send the same message uh, several times. So you can also play f6. However, like some people are saying, g5 is the main move here. g5, so basically black is trying to play g4 and undermine white's center. White can react in many ways, but usually they say that you should just give up this pawn in e5. You should play actively. So d takes c5. And after knight takes c5, now you can see that black got what they wanted. They got the central pawn. On the other hand, the king is still sitting in the center. White has different ways of playing this position. What I have learned here is that with black, don't uh, play this too quickly. Don't rush with g4. Sometimes it's better to keep the pawn on g5 so that it's not exposed and so on. Knight b3. I know you can also, in some variations, you can play bishop b5, but okay, this is how the game went. So knight takes d3, queen takes d3. Enough talking from me. It's your move here, guys. What do you think black should play? Uh, I'll quiz you for the next... Uh, how many moves should I quiz you for? Yeah, I'll quiz you for the next three moves. Here we go. Uh, good luck, everyone. Take your time. Take your time. Don't send me the moves that quickly. That's the right idea, Giril. You got the right idea. But I think I have a move there, Queen E2. I think Queen E2 is uh, annoying for you. Google says uh, the same goes for you. I think, and Amazon, I think Queen E2 is a troublesome move at that point. Chess Samurai, very interesting move, uh, very dynamic. Uh, maybe you can play like that. I'm not completely sure what I would play. <laughs> uh, maybe I can also use uh, pawn moves, right? Maybe I could play something like uh, F4 there. Don't forget, Chess Samurai, that uh, whenever you take the pawn on C5, I might have queen b5 coming up, right? So it's not that you're winning the c5 pawn or, or anything. Titan chess, Tori chess, Babu Manasu, L008 and Hong Pao. Interesting idea, but uh, okay, your king is sitting in the center. So uh, safe to say, I will start an attack there. f4 is coming up there, uh, those of you who want to play h5. So nobody's playing like the English grandmaster, legendary Matthew Sadler. Nobody follows in his footsteps. Really? Was this so difficult? And I told you it was about pawn play, right? Oh, this was so difficult. Oh, I think you have touched all the pawns at this point. But nobody plays what, uh, what the grandmaster played. Hmm. So what to do here? Let's, uh, let's have a quick look and see if we understand. The most natural move, in my opinion, is e5, because we have a strong center. We have two pawns in the center against zero. However, in this case, as you can see, typical clash. Black has long-term advantages, bishop power and strong center. White has short-term advantages, safer king and better development. I think white will play here the move queen e2. They're attacking the pawn on e5. This pawn should not advance because in that case, white can use this square for their knight, for example. Please notice the tactical motive that this is always coming up in this variation, all right? So, uh, yeah, hold on, Henry, I saw the you say the most natural move is queen c7. Yeah, if, we'll come back to you. But let's uh, see here. If black defends with f6, unfortunately, they run into queen h5. And probably white can start bothering the black king. They were just, by the way, just one tempo away from playing bishop e6 and being able to play bishop f7. But time is money, no? In this kind of position with the king in the center, uh, white should uh, act in a very direct way. So if I'm not mistaken, e5 is a mistake. Oh, please wait, Hank. Yeah, maybe we can do a quiz again, but let me talk about the moves that you have suggested so far. So queen c7 says, uh, uh, Henry this is the most natural move. I'm afraid that I'll play f4 here. I haven't calculated these variations, but I think this is what white should play here. Even if you take this pawn at this point, maybe I can play king h1 and I'm threatening queen b5. I'm also threatening to take your pawn to bring all my pieces to the attack. Classical clash between long-term and short-term advances. White should act very quickly. Uh, H5 was proposed by several students. I think F4 again is called for. I would play this every day here. F4 is coming up all the time. Please notice the pattern that if you take 
I can take back and perhaps put the bishop on e5 at some point. This will also be dangerous for you. Um, if you play g4, you can count on f5 coming up for sure. I'll try to open up the game as, as, uh, as soon as I can, put the rook on e1 and so on. Yeah, free pawns. Yeah, I give away those pawns, but I, I need to attack you, right? So uh, move the king to g6. Yeah, interesting plan. But also in the strategical battle here, um, you're in bad shape, right? I will have a fantastic knight on d4 also. So I don't believe in this for, for black, honestly. I think this looks very critical for black. So you can't play knight 4 due to bishop to takes e5, you mean? I, I don't know. Okay, you, you want to analyze this? Titan chess. All right, f5, pawn takes, bishop f4. You can have the move with Titan chess. What do you want to play with black? All right, castles. So I guess I'll just play like in the good old days, bring in all the pieces. King h7, you're placing yourself on, on that diagonal. So if I play knight e4, you'll take on c5. What if I if I move my bishop to e5? What's your next move? I'm about to sack here. Oh, king g6. All right. Anyone with a sharp tactical eye? I see one variation here, but I don't know if it's true. But I would like to play like this. And if you take on c5, I'll take on f5. If you take on d4, I can play rook f2. You put your king somewhere and I take back. What do you think? This looks uh, critical, no? This looks dangerous for black, in my opinion. Please let me know if I'm missing something. I don't think you can take here, right? This looks extremely scary for, for black. All right, we have some comments here. Rook takes e7 before bishop... E oh, we had rook takes e7? Really? When was that? Here. Oh, I see what you mean. Rook takes e7 and probably you want to play bishop d6, Wacky Hill. Aha, uh -huh, I see what you mean. Pick up the exchange and uh, maybe take the pawn. Yeah, this doesn't look that nice for, for black, does it? So dangerous. Uh, your idea is not misguided, uh, Titan Chess, to castle long. You can indeed do that in this system. But I think uh, it's too much if, uh, if you let white uh, break through with f5. All right, so what are we looking at? h5. Yeah, I think this is too reckless. Unfortunately, it's not that kind of position that we just want to push the pawns and mate them. It's not like that. It's more of looking at the center. This move e5 is much more natural. However, e5, queen e2, like I'm saying, I can't see a good defense of the e5 pawn due to this uh, queen h5 trick, right? Uh, a5 was proposed also, yeah. Sometimes you combine these moves in this system, but not at this point, I think. f4 is coming again. Uh, Chess Samurai, I think you said, uh, you said a5, right? What was your idea, Chess Samurai, if you're around? Or maybe not around. Uh huh. So I don't know. I don't like this. You're here. All right. Uh, you can have the pieces here if you like. Did you look at something? I know you had very little time, but maybe you saw something interesting for black here. Yeah, everybody understands that uh, the pawn cannot be taken, right? Because queen b5. So bishop d7, that's a typical move in this system. And uh, now the pawn might be taken next turn. All right, what do you say? Should we take the pawn and try to play queen f3 and threaten mate? Or is there something better? Yeah, maybe just bring out the bishop. I think that's how you play this, right? You just develop and uh, you try to reach some kind of position with a bad bishop and uh, weaknesses on the dark squares and so on. No way black is better, says Amazon. I don't know. I don't know. I, I like white here, but uh, I'm not a computer. I cannot say if this is much better for white, but scary at, at least. You have some plan like doubling the rooks, attacking the pawn on g7 and so on. So, yeah. All right. Uh, some people say they want to quiz again. We can quiz again if you like. We can quiz again. Is there any other move that we need to comment on? F5 was also proposed. Yeah, the problem with F5 is that, I mean, look at the spawn structure. Look at your bishop. I'll play F4 anyway, and I'll put the bishop on e3 and so on. G4 says Wacky Hill. G4? For white, you mean? That's a surprising move. No, I think F4 with, with white is, is what is called for here. I think this is a strong move. We are fighting for this blockade, right? Okay, enough talking, I think. Let's do this again. Uh, you'll have your second and last chance here. Let's see if you can find the great continuation chosen by Grandmaster Matthew Sadler at this point. 
All right, here we go. Pawn play. How can we achieve a favorable pawn structure here with the black pieces? Interesting move by Chess Samurai and HDI Chess and Giril uh, and Titan Chess. Yeah, uh, interesting. Without any intention to bore you, I'll play F4 anyway, I think, right? Should I do that? No, Bishop E3, I think I... No, we'll see, we'll see. I'm not completely sure. We will have a look. Oh, a lot of people want to play like that. Nobody's touching the pawn that, uh, that you should uh, use here. <laughs> okay, Henry Arsor, you got it. You're our, we could say, first winner. But uh, I think you chose the wrong destiny for your king. Think about that, uh, Henry Arsold. Where would you like to uh, safeguard your king? Which uh, sector of the board? Okay, so everybody wants to play like chess samurai here. So many people want to play in uh, gambit style, or what should we call that? And d4, d4 is really the surprising move. You open up the game having your king in the center. You must have very good reasons to do that because that could be some kind of suicide, opening up the default. All right, so uh, very, very, very quickly. Uh, we want to undermine b6. We want to play b6 to undermine white's weak c5 pawn. All right, I see what you mean. Uh, this cannot be taken seriously. No, d4, I don't think that's really possible. Um, Maybe your idea would be to put the queen on d5. Yeah, in that way I can actually understand it. I think I'll take with the... Yeah, how should white take back? Anyone, how would you take back? Because if we take with the pawn, they can put the queen on d5, right? Queen takes d4, says Santos. Yeah, maybe you're right. So we're just a... You mean we're just a pawn up in the endgame? So... Um... Yeah, maybe. A pawn is a pawn, like they say, right? Maybe. I, I would love to keep the queen song with white, but I don't know exactly how, how to do that. I would like to take with a knight, of course, but I can see that you would like to play e5, and then I don't have a good reply there. Um, yeah, I would be thrilled to play knight takes d5, knight takes d4, e5, rook e1, pawn takes, bishop takes d5, but you have bishop e6, right? So... Maybe rook d1. Um, yeah, Wacky Hill. I was also checking your variation. I saw this also, but I couldn't see this clearly. If I play c6, you can... Oh, I see what you mean, Wacky Hill. You can take on e5 then. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Good point. Another move that you could consider perhaps is uh, rook d1. Nobody said that you're forced to... But yeah, I don't know what's going on here. Honestly, this is not clear to me. This looks like a funny variation. Just to take this pawn and... Hopefully they will take on B2. <laughs> Who knows? Anyway, let's uh, get back to reality here. Uh, so everybody wants to play B6. We only have one uh, winner here who is Henry Arsor. We will come back to Henry. And okay, Babu Manasu, you also got it. Nice. Uh, anyway, back to back to Henry. I think I checked this move. Back to, to Chesamurai, I mean. I think I checked this move also, B6. I understand the point. If I take... How are you going to take back uh, Chess uh, Samurai? You were the fastest one here. What was your idea? You take with the Queen so as to develop the... Oh, with the Pawn. Now Bishop A6 is coming up. But okay, I have maybe sometimes Queen D1 as a counter uh, resource. Right. So maybe this is kind of nice, no? Kind of nice. But okay, I can also maybe use this square with my, with my Knight. Uh, in any case, uh, it, this might be playable, but let me see if I play in a more more aggressive way here. Let's see. Could I play here the my favorite move, f4? So, go for it, chess samurai. Uh-huh. And I would love to take on g5. You play c4, I play queen f3. Uh, will you take my knight also? Queen takes, king d7. Uh, because if pawn takes c4, queen d4... Queen b6. I don't know what to think about that. Um, so what does that mean? You see what I mean, right? If you play like this, if I put my queen here, chess samurai, safe to say, will swap off my queen. That's not what I want. Well, well, I mean, it was castles maybe after a queen. Yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, bond Oh, you want a castle here? Oh, interesting. Yeah, probably you can play that. And I have to be a little careful. Yeah, this is not so impressive. Also, 
my pawn is actually harming my attack. Uh -huh. We have some comments. What about queen b5 check? Oh, is that a, is that a good move? Queen b5 sure. check? I actually went after uh, fg5. We're not going to go c4. So here we go, queen b5. No, I don't think so, no. I mean, after no. pawn g5. Pawn g5 castles. Pawn g5 castles. Yeah. I, I'm afraid I, I don't follow. What, what do you think white should play here, by the way? F4, pawn c5, pawn g5, castles. Yeah, 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 I understand, I understand. That looks playable. I think I, I messed it up already. Black looks fine here. Uh, we should like, look for something better with white. We should not let them connect the pawns. So maybe f4 is uh, out of place here. What else could we play with, with white here? Although f4 looks so nice. Uh, queen b5 checks as all. Uh, yeah, maybe that's the right one. Because if you put something on d7, you cannot put a bishop there, I think. Well, you can, but uh, then you will have to go back and you lose a lot of time, right? Interesting. So queen b5 maybe is, is not that bad uh, idea. If queen d7, we can play c6 and perhaps now we can play f4. I'm always interested in playing f4. Uh -huh. a6, and now put the queen. We don't have to go back necessarily. We can see maybe the queen is better off at e2, maybe? For some reason, the queen is better there. Queen a4, d4. Oh, oh, right. right. Uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, slight uh, misunderstanding. Yeah, that's a better move. You're right, uh, Wacky Hill. You're much more awake than I am. I think I need to drink some more coffee. Queen a4, of course, to move the queen to d4. Nice. Well, isn't white losing c6? Yeah, definitely, Titan Chess. We will lose that pawn at some point. But uh, after all, this is about activity. Rook g8. We can take the pawn. We can also play with this f5 move, right? But I guess we take it, though. We just take it. And uh, we hope that uh, we can bring in the bishop. Bishop d6. Now, I mean, as far as I know, we should move, play moves like this. E5 will bring the rook to the to the attack. I think white is better here. Yeah, A4 is interesting also. Uh, Wacky Hill, you're right. Black fight back. <laughs> yeah. Who knows? And many things can go on here. I'm not convinced that white is much better here. But uh, but okay, it looks fun for for white to play this. Uh, yeah. Please notice, everyone, this is not making sense for black. Their center is starting to crumble now. So next game says Amazon. Yeah, let's get back to business. We had two winners, but Henry Arsor got uh, got it uh, got the best solution. So please, uh, yeah, we'll come to the answer now. Please go ahead, uh, Henry. Where are you? Uh, how can I find? Uh, you're not in uh, alphabetical order. Where is Henry? Did you leave? Oh no, here you are. All right, go for it, uh, Henry. Show us what did the grandmaster play. Nobody played this move except for Henry and uh, some, someone else. Aha, f6. That's the right move. Because now we're about to play e5. But we're waiting for information, no? If white plays queen e2, trying to give check, we can safely castle away, right? And then we can go e5 next turn. So please notice the difference here. If we play e5 straight away, queen e2 is annoying because if f6, queen h5. But if we use this move order, starting with f6, it's much more flexible we can then uh, castle. We don't want to castle in the first place because in that case, white can, of course, play f4. Bad timing, no? Bad timing. They can put the queen on g3 and so on. So f6, very, very flexible move. f4 was played in the game. Please continue, Henry. That's right. So now I think everybody... No, that's, that's a misunderstanding. You, you don't have to... Put the king there, or maybe it was a mouse slip. Yeah, that's probably a mouse slip. You don't, don't, and no reason to play like that. Just stick to the plan, stick to the plan. Why did we play f6? Oh, it was a self mate, I understand. That's a funny detail. So, e5. Strategically, I hope that uh, you and me, we agree on this, right? Black is very happy to have a strong center, which can be supported by both bishops. We should all only make sure that our king is not uh, going to die in the process. No, we have to keep an eye now on the king. If, if this situation stays on the board, black would be much better in the end game and so on, in the middle game. Strong center and bishop pair. So in the game, white played bishop h6. And what did you play here, uh, Henry? 
Maybe here you get it wrong. It's actually very complex. It's not easy to see this uh, over the board. White is preparing to go bishop d7, followed by queen takes h7. Black took measures against that. So chess samurai says bishop e6. Yeah, that's fine. It will transpose probably. In the game, they played rook g8, and after queen takes uh, h7, now they played your move, chess samurai. Now they played bishop e6. So again, strategically, this is easy to understand. Black is going to move the queen somewhere and castle. After that, they will be better because they have a fantastic center. White's only chance... Yeah, I know L means bishop, uh, chess samurai in German, in also in Swedish, uh, L is, is bishop. Uh -huh. So we can speak about languages some other uh, day. Yeah, Läufer in, in German. Yeah, I know some German. Exactly. So this is a very nice position for black, but there is one last detail that I want to ask you for. White played at this point the move bishop g7. Now we're speaking tactics. Forget about the pawn play at this point. I, yeah, Springer is knight. Exactly. Now I would like to know the best move for black. Please notice that uh, there are some tactics in this position, okay? This is just tactics. It's not related to our topic today. I'll quiz you for black's next move. Very precise move by the Grandmaster. Um, let's see if we can, if we can figure this out. Uh, let me bring up the variation here. All right. But it's only tactic, guys. It's only tactic now. 100% tactic. I understand, uh, Giri, your move. Against your move, I'll play queen g6, check, bishop f7, and queen h6. And then I'm going to take your pawn on f6, all right? The same goes for you, Santos and uh, Babu Manasu. I'll play queen g6, check, bishop f7, and queen h6. Interesting move by Titan Chess. I guess I'll take that pawn. I'll take it. I am happy to open up the position here. But it's it's a tricky question. It's tricky. Remember that black would really like to castle as long as possible, okay? Chess Samurai, you got it. That's uh, the right answer. That's uh, RZ 2018. You got it as well. That's a tiny little tactical detail that we have to consider. All right. Uh, Amazin, I'm sorry. I'll play queen g6 check followed by queen h6. The same goes for Pando, Charles Hua, and hdi chess. All right. Uh, yeah, there were some other moves also. Bishop f7, some people are saying as well. Aha. Uh -huh. That's another playable move. Anyway, let's listen to RZ 2018. Please go ahead. How do you play here? Queen d7, exactly. We have two candidate moves, queen c7 and queen d7. In the first place, please notice that I'm not hanging this pawn, right? Black has a nasty tactic coming up. As you can see, the queen is in there, so actually black picks up the queen here. So I cannot take the pawn on f6. On the other hand, if I give this check in order to play queen h6 next turn and then to take the pawn, uh, black has a killing move. Exactly. Great work by RZ 2018. That's the reason why we should put the queen on C on D7. If we put it on C7 instead, I can actually sorry, uh, mouse sleep. I can actually play like this, and I'm about to take this pawn next turn. I don't even care if you take that pawn. I'll still have some uh, compensation here in this position. It's still not so clear. I'll take this pawn and so on. But uh, queen D7 is a very precise move. That's what uh, the grandmaster played in the game. Queen d7, and uh, I want queen d5, and castle to queen is very strong. All right, we have a comment here. Uh, just for the record, no, I think we're about to switch example. So queen d7 was played in the game. Black got a very nice uh, position. They played here the move king h1 to avoid this tactical trick. And here black played queen d8. White had troubles with his bishop, and black went on to win. Okay, last uh, comment on this example. d4 says uh, Titan chess. d4. Yeah, I don't like it on general grounds, you know. I don't like to open the game when my king is still in the center. But okay, we should not be that dogmatic. No, I'll take... What was your idea, Titan Chess? You can have the move here. Please go ahead. What were you planning? Queen d5? To eye the pawn on g2, you mean? All right. I see what you mean. What would I play there? Yeah, good point. Good point. Yeah, I guess... 
I could take the pawn on e5. Yeah, let's play the most uh, critical moves first, right? Let's take the pawn. But now we have to be very careful because um, Titan Chess wants to mate us on the on g2. Pawn takes e5. But then you're giving me rook d1 for free, right? This cannot be correct, can it? Yeah, I don't follow uh, Titan Chess. Your position is very loose now. Queen check somewhere, right? Anyone with a sharp tactical eye. If I take... I can't see how this is going to work. The e-file is opened also. Wow, this is an incredible variation. If I play knight takes e6, you're going to play queen takes d1. But I could, for example, play queen c2 check first if I like. Yeah, I don't believe in this... Uh... Titan chess. I don't believe in this. I'll take here and I'm I'm claiming that I'm a sound piece up. Queen c4 says Santos. Oh, I didn't see that one. But maybe I can take on e5 then Santos, don't you think? Oh, you have rook takes d4. Well, that's incredible. Anyone uh, help me out of this tactical jungle? <laughs> rook c1. Okay, yeah, rook c1 is probably a good move. But I can also take on e I can also take here if I like and I'm uh, I'm two points up, right? So I have any chance to win this game. I'm two points up. Yeah, this is worse than the previous one. Yeah, we can continue blitzing here, but I think it's clear that it's White who's playing for the win. This might be a good move, by the way, at some point. Anyway, uh, summing up, what we saw in this highly complex example was that Black should try to create a pawn center. For that to happen, we should not rush with e5 due to queen e2. We should play the move f6 first and only then go for e5 as soon as possible. All right. What do you think? Should we bring up something slightly more simple, perhaps? Yeah, I'll bring up something much, uh, much more, more simple for you. So we will have a look at the Benoni, a Benoni position with the white pieces. Let's see if you can get uh, this one. Uh, this one is rather simple. You're playing with the white pieces. Please remember, we're speaking pawn play today. Let me know how to continue here with the white pieces. Uh, Let's go up to this point. All right, 130. Good luck, everyone. Try to use your pawns in a clever way. Yeah, if you play the Benoni with the white pieces, this will be simpler, of course. I wouldn't trade that Bishop uh, Girir for the time being. I would keep it there a little longer. By the way, a very nice game in this variation, Shankland Leko, a few years ago in the World Cup. Uh, Shankland won a very nice game with the white pieces. Uh, interesting idea, Titan Chess and Charles Hua, you got it. Yeah, that's what we're playing for. Aha. Um, Hong Pao, Bucky Hill, that's exactly the right plan. If you play uh, Rook C1, I think I will play Knight d7 there yeah knight f7 i'll play there uh, if rook c7 i can probably go queen d8 right okay we can talk about that you got it l008 we have our first winner here uh, f3 i think that's misguided don't weaken your door squares please i would play knight h5 against that okay Queen B yeah, that's perfect, RZ and Strategic Skimmer, that's excellent. I think the engine preferred your move, so that's fine. Chess Samurai and Babu Manasu, that's another uh, great plan. Aha. Uh, yeah, F3 is not, uh, not uh, advisable here, that's right. Uh, interesting move by Mega Charles Rex. Anyway, L008 and Quoki, you got it right. Uh, please go ahead, L, how would you continue here? B4, that's... Typical plan in the Benoni, very often you prepare it with rook b1. I'll show you very soon what is the difference. Why is it better to play b4 straight away? Okay, in the game, black took back and the Grandmaster played simply rook b1. Actually, if I remember this correctly, the engine was asking for the move queen b3 uh, for some reason. But I like the move rook b1. I think it's a great, uh, great idea. Rook c1 was uh, su uh, suggested by some people. I think I would play knight c7 on that. I'm very interested in taking on b6, and I would like you to take with a pawn, all right? Black would like white to take with a pawn, because in that case, black would have a 
passed pawn on the a file, right? So if you play rook c7, I think I would play here queen d8, right? And I'm planning to go knight c5 next turn. No, not rook c7, says Titan chess. All right, what do you want to play then? Knight dc4 at this point. All right, knight dc4. Um, interesting. Yeah, I like your idea. Maybe this is uh, also inter interesting for, for white. Okay, so if I take, you're going to take with a knight, I suppose. Aha, and if I now play knight e5, don't forget that black is usually happy to trade pieces in the in the Veroni because they have less space. But okay, I need to solve the problem with this bishop also. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not so convinced about uh, by this. Uh, queen b3 uh, says tight and chess if queen takes, knight takes and rook takes c4. All right, bishop c3, I guess, yeah, that's a good point. You can just take it probably, right? Or you can take here. You have a fantastic combination now that there is no bishop on this diagonal, I guess. So I should not play bishop c3. All right. Some g5, f4, is that possible? Or it's, it's too brave, maybe, to play like that. Uh, b5, rook c6. Yeah, maybe you're right, the Titan says. You're convincing me already. Maybe this is very promising for you. Okay, a true Benoni player never looks back. No, never... Uh, uh, never plays for defense. I'll play for the attack instead. All right, go ahead, uh, Titan Chess. How how will you continue here? <laughs> I can give you the the move, of course. Uh, okay. What do you think? Don't you think I have some tiny counterplay here? Queen takes before. All right. If I now take on e three, what's your move? You take on d six, then I guess. That must be your idea. Uh-huh. And something's going on here also. I don't know. Do you have complete control here, uh, Titan Chess? I, I'm not sure what's going on, but uh, I'll trust you. Careful that Queen E3 is coming. Huh? It works. Aha, you have Bishop C5. Interesting. I see, I see, I see. Bishop C5 probably, right? Yeah, anyone, if, if uh, this is wrong, let us know. Uh, White seems to be winning here, right? Oh, bishop takes f8. Was that possible? Oh, sorry, sorry. I didn't see that move. Aha, you're right. So I got carried away here. Queen takes before. I must look for something better. Bishop e5 looks like a natural move. Uh, but okay, this pawn is probably hanging. Yeah, maybe you're right then. Maybe you're right. Black is uh, suffering here. I could play something like bishop f5, perhaps. Bring out the bishop. Is that possible? Resign? Why should I resign here? <laughs> I won't resign. Now look at what you did to your bishop. All right. I'll put my bishop on g6 or d7. I'm not sure. I'll put it here. Though. Why should black resign here? That, that's not uh, understandable. I can put my bishop on e5. If you give check out. Who has the worst bishop here? Rook c1. Yeah, right. Good point. Rook c1 and uh, rook c7 is coming. Yeah, I guess you're right then. Yeah, maybe I'm I'm struggling here in this in this position. I don't know. Well, I don't know. You have to look at uh, white has one bad piece, but black has one good piece. Yeah, maybe maybe you're right. Uh, complex uh, complex situation. Probably white is uh, much better here. That's what you would like to say. Uh huh. Yeah, let's uh, let's agree on that then. Let's agree on that. But I'm happy that I provoked if or no. Yeah, one last question. If I keep my bishop on d7 instead, I know I'm inviting rook c7, but I wanted to play simply rook c8. I'll give up a pawn there. Rook c7. I'll play rook c8. You can. Oh, but you're taking this pawn probably. Yeah. Yeah, this looks uh, nice for, for white. You're right. Yeah, you're convincing me. Yeah, this looks uh, good for white. So. Maybe you're right then. You can play rook c1 and then you can play knight c4. That was the idea, right? That was the idea. How should, if we compare this to the game, what should be the conclusion? Yeah, I'm not sure either. Um, yeah, maybe we can play bishop. But I don't want to give up my Benoni bishop. One last question. Okay, I'll play knight takes. You play knight takes, I play g5. I guess you play bishop h2 and I try to push f4. 
but okay, you can probably, this pawn will fall off, but yeah, it's up to you. You can have my pawn. I understand my rook is overloaded to these two pawns, to, to, to these two places. Um, I'm not so convinced. Are you? E takes f4. All right, I'll take back. Rook takes e8. All right, I'll just take back. I guess you take, I take back. You take on f4. So you have the bishop pair and uh, you have a better pawn structure. But I have this passed pawn. So how should we regard this? Knight g6 maybe? I don't know. Oh, queen d2 is better, says. Uh, no, but not here, right? Queen d2 must be a bad idea, right? You give me attacking chances for free. Who knows? After all, guys, we are moving the pieces. The players, they can't do what we're doing, right? So it's better to choose some simpler way. So let's go back to the example. I was saying to you that b4 is the most precise move. Please notice that if rook b1, black will play knight fd7. The big point is here that if we now play b4, which is a typical idea, in the Benoni, black can take on b6, and we have to take in this way. That makes a huge difference, because in this kind of situation, you can see that uh, in the long run, I have a passed pawn on the a5. Uh, white would very much like to have the pawn on a5 instead, so that they have pressure on the b5. One pawn stops two, and so on. So that's why it's so nice to play b4 straight away, and that's what the grandmaster played in the game. And uh, now if knight takes the knight fd7, it's different, no? We can, for example, take on uh, d7, and uh, after knight takes d7, we could play knight c4, and we have... It's like the game, right? But it's different. We have, we have one at tempo. You can even give up the exchange here. I don't know if you take here first, or if you play queen takes a1. Yeah, maybe take here first. This looks very nice for, for white. So somehow we gain flexibility by playing b4 straight away. We don't lose time on moving the rook. So... In the game, after b4, black took on d4, white continued with rook b1, queen b3 was also possible, and after uh, knight e7, rook takes b4. Now you can see what I'm speaking about. If black takes on b6, how would you take back uh, anyone? Exactly, exactly. We should take with the rook here, because in that way we keep this pressure on the Queen side, they're not able to push b5 and so on. Very, very nice position for white. Please notice that we can bring a queen to a3, for example, put pressure on the pawn. The knight c4 plan that I think chess, uh, Titan Chess was explaining and so on. Oh, bishop takes a6 is a threat, says Wocky Hill. Yeah, you're right. I didn't notice this. But uh, you're right. There is a pin on the b5. So, yeah, something like that uh, happened in the game. Something like that happened in the game. We don't need to spend too much more time on this uh, g 5 they played in the game. You can see that they played exactly like I was trying to play. <laughs> but uh, here it didn't work out well because white just took back and played king h1. And uh, they had a much better position. It's not so easy for black to uh, continue their attack. There is no f3 and so on. Um, Rook e1 is coming up also. So black just played bishop f5, bishop takes f4 and white went on to win. All right. So please notice b4, very strong idea in the Benoni structure. Very often you prepare it with rook b1, but here you can actually play it straight away. It gives you some dynamic uh, advantages or flexibility advantages and so on. All right, let's uh, move on. Let's move on. Let's see something else. Let's see another uh, closed structure. All right, let's see another closed structure. We are playing here with the uh, black pieces. I would like to know which is the best uh, choice for black here. All right. Remember, today's topic is pawn play. All right. Today's topic is pawn play. I'll ask you for three moves here. And no, this is not from my book. This game is from uh, last year, I think. Uh, this, uh, I couldn't include it in my book. I try not to pick examples from my book here. Uh, chess Samurai. Uh, I try to pick uh, fresh examples. Interesting idea, Amazine. I can give you half a point for that move. Um, it makes some sense. Uh, Henry Arsold and Santos also. Uh, Girir, you're giving away that pawn? 
do you have compensation? Interesting move, Wacky Hill. I won't take that. I'll play Knight D6 instead, uh, Wacky Hill. Okay, so far nobody follows in the footsteps of the Hungarian Grandmaster. Nobody plays like black in this game. Yeah, I give you very little time also, so maybe that's why it's, it's hard to, to see this so quickly. Uh -huh. Yeah, so Chess Samurai and Pikachu, I won't take there. I'll play Knight... Uh, I'm, I hope I can play Knight D6 there. My hope is that I can get away with Knight D6. If you can refute it, uh, great for you, but... Uh, that's what I would like to play here, knight d6. Okay, we can talk about that uh, very soon. So, nobody... Oh, okay, but Tori Chess, you, you're very, very close. And Charles Hua also. Google Chess, uh, I get the point, but you can take recapture in a better way. Okay, nice, I'm happy. Some people uh, noticed that here. That's great. So, safe to say, Tori Chess was uh, closest here. Let's... Uh... Oh, yeah, you have a bad day, Walkie Hill, but you have helped me a lot with uh, different moves and suggestions and so on. So don't uh, worry. The important thing is to learn, not to score in these uh, quizzes. So, all right, uh, Tori Chess, uh, please go ahead. How do you play here? F6. That's an extremely, uh, how can I say, active move, right? Because it releases a lot of pieces on the board. When black plays F6, look for yourself. How many pieces... Uh, will improve, I mean, will have a better uh, range after this move, f6. We can count them, right? After f6, the rook will have a better range, the queen, the bishop, the knight. We can also look at the black pieces. The rook, the bishop, the queen, the knight, and so on. Everybody is happy about this move, f6, but we have to check uh, if maximum happiness is with white or with black here. So that's what we will have a look at now. I'll take on f6, how to take back. With a knight here. This is a nice decision. Please notice that black is sitting with a weakness. However, black has noticed that they have attacking uh, prospects here. Because after all, uh, yeah, white has this diagonal, but black has that diagonal. If you look uh, at the eight uh, minor pieces on the board, you can see that there is one piece which is more passive than the rest. So which is the most passive piece here, guys? Exactly, the bishop on f1. So if black is able to trade, for example, these bishops. Safe to say, white will have problems with a very passive bishop, and black would not have an equivalent piece. So, uh, yeah, g3, king, g2, but uh, then you're looking at this bishop also, Titan chess. Uh, queen b3 was played in the game, and here you play the Tory chess, queen c7, which is okay to protect this pawn. Probably black is better here. Uh, even like this. I mean, just for the record, no, if I take like this, uh, black will have a fantastic combination here, uh, compensation here. Sorry, Tori Chess. How would you continue Tori Chess here with, uh, with black? A very, very pretty com continuation here, if I'm not mistaken. Here, please look carefully. Don't play 94. I can take on d4. Improve this idea, please. I hope I'm not uh, mistaken here. Exactly, Titan Chess, you got it. That's what I'm saying also. Exactly. Good work by Tori Chess. You see what's happening here. Fantastic minor pieces. Fantastic minor pieces. The knight is coming to d4. And as you can see, as far as I can see, white is in huge trouble here. What a complete metamorphosis on the board. Uh, black species are extremely active now. So this is more or less what white should be careful about. Uh, that's if we play queen c7, which was proposed by Tori Chess. In the game, black just managed to speed up this attack. So anyone, how can we... Yeah, hi, Greg, nice to see you. How can we speed up the attack with black? Uh, okay, I can quiz you, of course, on this move. So everybody, how to speed up the attack? I'll just ask you for one move here. Please notice that the H-pawn has some disadvantages. When you push the H-pawn, you also leave some weaknesses. L008, you got it. That's the smartest move. Hank, Titan Chess, Mega Chosrek, Quacky, Wacky Hill. Everybody got this one. RZ, Hong Pao, great work. That's the best move in this position. You know your... Uh, how do you... Uh, puzzle Chess? What's the name of this? Uh, puzzle? Not Puzzle. What do? What is this game you play on Chess.com? Puzzle Rush, right? This is like the Puzzle Rush tactic. So, 
Please go ahead, uh, Hank. Yeah, what do you play here with black pieces? Right, so here you can see clearly puzzle rush, the tactics are coming, rook takes a three to give mate, white is in deep trouble. Uh, in the game, they played, uh, what did they play in the game? Yeah, I don't really remember what they played in the game, but it's safe to say that black is uh, stronger here. Black is better here, I mean, in this position. They have a lot of uh, compensation. Uh, rook takes a three is threatened, 94 is coming also. Uh, so let's go back to the beginning here. Uh, by playing f6, it's true that uh, white uh, also improves many of their pieces, but in the long run, it seems that it's black who is favored by this. Yeah, in the game, white didn't dare to take on f6. In the game, now I can see the notation here. They played in the game queen b3. Black just took this pawn, free pawn, and later on, uh, they played some move at some point, knight e4, and they were better. But okay, e takes f6, of course, was critical. And after knight takes f6, as you can see here, we're attacking the pawn, but more importantly, we're trying to play knight e4. If black takes, we take with the bishop and we're ready to take on b2. And even this idea of rook takes f3 comes to mind. As for your other moves here, uh, b5 was certainly possible also. I'm not sure what white would play. Maybe some prophylactic move like rook b1. Uh, if you play b4, I'll move my... I'll take maybe. Yeah, I'll take perhaps. I have some hopes of pushing d4 at some point. Yeah. Um, what else? If you play f5, I was hoping to play knight d6. Yeah, some people were saying this. Uh, I don't know if this does this work for black. Uh, maybe it does. I don't know. I mean, my idea is that I'm threatening a mate, right? So I don't know. If you can make this work, you're fine. But uh, it seems to me that knight takes e5, says Hank. With which knight? Knight takes this knight? But I'll take and. How do you cope with a mating threat? I don't follow. You take on d6, you mean? But then I might play knight c6, right? What will you do next? I have this double threat, right? Bishop f6, says Santos. But not here, then. Oh, here, bishop f6. Wow. That's uh, interesting. Oh, maybe you can play like that, can you? I'm sorry. I'm not following here completely. If I take on b7... And I take with a rook on e5. What does that mean? I th if I'm not mistaken, I get two pieces for for the rook. No? Yeah, I don't follow here. I'll just take on e5. I'm sorry. I don't uh, believe in this for, for black. So, bottom line, very good move, f6. We open up the game for our pieces. Dynamics or helping your pieces or whatever you call it. Uh, Santos, you wanted to continue this variation? Let's see. If, 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 if it's really necessary, we can, of course, do it. Knight takes e5, uh, knight takes e5, bishop f6, knight takes b7. I don't follow. I take on e5. What do you want to play here? Uh, you're losing material, aren't you? Knight takes e5 first. I, okay, you can have the pawn. You can have the pawn so that you can move the pieces, okay? Uh, please go ahead. Uh, here, okay. All right, I'll take, I'll take, I'll take. Yeah, but uh, do your maths here, do your maths. I have two bishops for, for the rook, right? I have a material advantage and also I have a killer bishop here. So I don't think this is a good idea for, for black, right? Okay. Uh, let's see. Let's see another example. Uh, I think this will be our uh, second last example. Yeah, this will be the second last example. Let's see if you can get this one right. Uh, we're speaking about uh, pawn play today. Here is another example uh, about pawn play. Uh, strong Swedish international master Linus Johansson with the white pieces. Let's see if you can see how my compatriot continued here with the white pieces. All right. I think this is a difficult one, but uh, I'm sure you can find uh, the very pretty way in which white continue this game. All right. One minute 30. How can we use our pawns here in a clever way? In this double-edged position. Uh, all right, Titan Chess, I think I'll just take it with the Queen, right? 
Interesting idea by Walkie Hill. If you play like that, yeah, I'll happily award you half a point for that uh, solution. I like your move. It's, it looks very interesting. Uh, B5 maybe, Walkie Hill. B5. Walkie Hill, HDI Chess, L008, Babu Manasu. I'll play B5 against you. I'll try to push B4 also and get rid of that bishop. Uh, just to let you know that this bishop is the hero of this game, okay? This bishop is the hero of the game. I'm not telling you to play e6. I'm just saying this is uh, a very important piece. All right, Santos and Charles Hua, you want to mate me? I think I'll play queen e6 there, if you play like that. And uh, those of you who play e6, like Titan Chess, Awesome Oven, Strategic Skimmer, and Mega Charles Rex, I'll take the pawn. I'll take the pawn and I'll try to survive. Okay, Kugel Chess, we have a winner here. Also, Hank, you got very far. Kwaki, you got far. Girir, so so. Don't swap queens, Girir. That's misguided. Black has the bishop pair. They would love to get to the end game. I get the point, Tori Chess. Uh, you can play like that also. But I think Kugel Chess has the right solution. So please go ahead, uh, Kugel Chess. Uh, let us know what did you notice here. That's right. This move at first sight looked completely contradictory. Why on earth should we open up the long diagonal for black species? However, White has noticed that, yeah, in chess and in any area of life, uh, you give some, you take some, right? So we give up the pawn structure, we end up with a bad pawn structure. However, we open up the F file, right? So please go ahead, uh, Google Chess, uh, you can play this out. We now ruined our pawn structure. Our opponent has the bishop pair. If you take away the queens, I think black would be clearly better here. Well, for starters, they will be attacking the rook, right? But the queens are on. And from here on, the only thing that white will do, they'll play for an attack. Okay? Black played in the game the move uh, queen e6, attacking the rook. Our next move is not difficult to see. We don't have any plans on moving this rook. Right? Uh, Kugel chess. Aha, that's right. e4, preparing the move knight f5. As you can see, there are tactics coming up here. Black played in the game uh, rook fd8, but white simply continued. Yeah, we st stifled the bishop. Oh, I didn't know that word, uh, Titan chess. Thanks for improving my English. So knight f5 came up here, and already it's very difficult to play black here. It's very difficult to play black. If I take, we can just take back and later on play rook g3, e6. White's attack plays itself here. It's very easy to continue with white. So uh, bishop f8 was played in the game. And uh, at this point, white knows that they are much better here. They brought uh, another piece to the action. Um, this pawn is a little loose, so we can uh, simply defend it. They played in the game rook e1. Very nice uh, preparatory move. I think what they would like to do here, they would like to play knight h6. Swap on h6 and play rook f6 and then push e6. That, that's basically white's plan. Please don't forget that once there are opposite color bishops on the board, attacking ideas usually become stronger, right? So uh, anyway, rook f1 was also possible. However, in the game, they played this technical move, protecting the pawn just in case. Rook d7 and uh, Kugel chess, are you still there? You can uh, probably uh, bring up the remaining moves here. Uh, it's time to strike, right? No answer for Kugel Chess. I'll have to quiz you instead on this because Kugel Chess is not answering. The moves are very simple, so uh, I think everybody will find it. All right. Yeah, half a point for you, Wacky Hill, if you play like that. Uh, it's perfectly fine, but maybe I can. Yeah, what will I play against your move? Yeah, good point. Okay, HDI Chess, Titan Chess, you managed to. Copy White's uh, playing the game. Aha. Uh -huh. Excellent. Uh, I think Girir L008 and Amazin, you were very close also. Aha. Uh -huh. Nice. So this is our second last example today. We will have one more example. Then we will call it a day. Uh, right. Uh, Babu Manasu, great work. You got it. That's how we can uh, start a very strong attack with the white pieces.
All right. Uh, interesting moves by Hank and strategic Simmer. I think your moves. Could I play Bishop takes E4 then? No, the rook is hanging on A8. Right. Many good moves here, probably. Uh, many good moves. Uh, I like your move, Waki Hill. That looks very impressive also. Maybe I can play Bishop G7, Waki Hill. What do you think? I play Bishop G7, and if you take on F7, I play Rook F8. Although it's true that you could play Rook F1. Yeah. I have no idea, really. <laughs> there are many ways to play. Hong Kao, you got it also. Great work. So, HDI Chess, you were the fastest one. How do you continue here? Aha, Knight H6, forcing the trade because the pawn is also uh, hanging, right? I cannot play King G7 if I'm not mistaken. Uh, what do you think, HDI Chess? We can play, play in a pretty way here, right? Pretty move here, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, exactly, Knight takes. You got it, Giri. That's right. I told you, this is the hero of this movie. Aha, exactly. So, uh, knight h6, black had to take, queen takes. Strategically, black seems to be fine here, but tactically, they cannot stop rook f6 and e6. So, basically, uh, they are uh, lost here already. Rook d8 was played in the game. Rook f6, queen g4, e6. Ah, some people are saying rook f3. I guess this is also very good for white. Uh, yeah, I don't know what black would play against that. Some kind of blockade with f6, probably. But uh, they should be lost here in the long run, of course. Uh, black, I mean. Black should be lost here. So I think that's okay. Why not rook h3, says Amazin. Yeah, I think I'm telling you the answer, right? Are you convinced, Amazin? Or... Yeah, maybe this also wins. It wouldn't surprise me at all. But it's very clear cut what they played in the game. Rook f6, and finally, 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 we're able to wake up our dormant bishop. So e6, very strong move. The game is basically over here. F takes e6 cannot be played because white will mate on f8, right? Uh, HDHS, exactly. So in the game, they played instead bishop takes e4 and white played the solid move rook f2. Yeah, in order to mate on g7, right? Pawn takes. And... Yeah, the rest is not difficult. You can see that uh, black has some hopes of some back rank motive, and that explains why it's next move, right? Um, HDHS. If the back rank, exactly, if the back rank is an issue, H3. And also, we're picking up the bishop. So that's how the game went, and white went on to win. All right. You said some other moves here also. 96 was uh, one suggestion. I don't know if I can play bishop d7, and if you take on f7, I can play rook f8. I don't know if this works. Rook f1, maybe I have bishop a6. You have to be careful about some rook d1 move. Um, yeah, other moves were also suggested. Rook h3 was also suggested. Looks very nice. Uh, so anyway, back to the initial position. You can see it's the similar picture as the previous example, right? Where we played f6 and we're opening up a diagonal for our opponent and so on. But white correctly noticed that they will benefit fr more from this opening of the position than black. After rook takes, followed by e4 and knight f5. Believe it or not, there was no real way for black to defend themselves here. I guess they would love to have a knight on e6, for example, but there is no such knight uh, on the board. So very, very impressive plan by, by white. They interpreted the position uh, in the right way. As for your other moves, h4 was proposed by some people. I think I would play b5 here. If you play h5, I play b4, because I know what happened in the game, right? I would like to drive away the bishop from this diagonal. If you play instead b3, I think I can try to play something like b4 and rook d8. And uh, if I can trade rooks, I think this might be beneficial for, for black. But uh, okay, half a point, definitely. I can award you half a point if you played h4. As for the other moves, e6, I don't really understand why would you play e6 at this point. I could then play f6. And uh, yeah, unless you can see something here, uh, I don't believe in this for, for white. So please remember dynamics, no? Dynamics, moves like f3 and f6, uh, keep them in mind. Even if you're weakening your own position, you, there might be benefits uh, due to other aspects in the position. All right. So let's bring up our last example for today. This game was played recently in the championship of Azerbaijan. Let's see if we can find this together. You're playing with the white pieces here. Uh, Karo Khan, again, try to find a very promising a uh, way to play with white. Uh, a lot of pawn play in this example. Let's see where I will stop. 
Um, oh, I'm asking you for many moves here, but okay, don't worry. That's where we will stop. So two minutes, but you have to find uh, many moves. Okay. Today's topic, pawn play. All right. This will be our last example on the topic of pawn play. Try to find very smart move by, by white here. Uh, don't forget that black has the king in the, in the center, right? We talked about this in the first example today. All right. So please don't forget that the king is in the center and we can probably uh, benefit from that. So I get the point, uh, Giri, Hong Pao, L008, Tori Chess. That's an interesting plan also. Uh, I'm not saying it's wrong, uh, but I think what they played in the game was more promising. Okay, Titan Chess, you're the fastest one here. You're the fastest one. You got almost everything right. That's the right spirit. So uh, great work by Titan Chess. Let's see if somebody else can uh, get there as well. I get the point, Santos and Hank. Uh, now that you know that your second move is not correct, think about what they played in the game. All right? And don't forget that Black's king is still sitting in the center. They need two moves to castle. No, Bishop g7 and castles and Black's king would be safe. How can we use our pawns in order to fight against the Black king, exploit the Black king in the center? How can we do that? Oh, everybody wants to play on that side. <laughs> I get the point, uh, Kwoki. Half a point for you. Okay, half a point. Maybe I can take that pawn on c3, you know? Maybe I can take it. So, this was a tough one. Wacky Hill, you got it. Everything. Fantastic. Great work. You have followed the footsteps of the Azerbaijan uh, Grandmaster. All right. So, let's uh, give the move to Wacky Hill. Let us know what you have found here. So, B3. What's going on here? We had this in some other example, I think. Breaking the pawn chain. If I play B5, trying to keep the pawn chain, we can just play A4. Exactly. Please notice, guys. The safety of the king is a very important factor. I think, actually, this is Black's best choice. That's what Black should have played. I looked at this a little. For example, if we play here B4, White can just take and play knight f3. I had a look at this. It looks very promising for, for white. On the other hand, after b5, a4, rook b8. Uh, I think the simplest choice here. Yeah, what would you play, uh, uh, Wacky Hill? How would you continue? Common sense. Uh, what does that mean, in your opinion? Aha, we, we can just take, uh, and we can take another time also, and... Finally, you can see exactly. Great work, Bishop uh, d6 is coming. Don't uh, rule out some sacrifice also. This looks much better for white. But even so, I think black should have played something like that. In the game, they played after b3, c takes b3. By the way, maybe we should speak about this very quickly. Uh, some, some people are saying f4. I understand this move also. It looks very logical to fight on the king side to open up the f file. But I think black can play something like knight f5 here. I think this is possible for black. Um, you take, I take back. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe not. Uh, but I think black should try something like this. If, oh, but you have g4 there, maybe. Uh-huh. Yeah, in interesting. Maybe sac sacrifice on f5, says uh, Babu Manasu. Yeah, you're right. Maybe... What about f4? I cannot really remember what should black play. Maybe I should take on f4 then. Yeah, probably I should take on f4 to avoid that. And maybe I can play something like h5 here. Is that possible? Try to put the bishop on h6. Yeah. I guess this is uh, what black should play. Aha, I think I got it wrong. This is how you should play with black. If uh, white plays f4. So maybe, maybe black can hold on. Yeah, these are very tricky positions. It's not clear, actually, if Black is castling long or short. I think at this point they're probably castling long instead. Uh, also, there is some idea with maybe to break with f6 later on. But okay, we should probably start with h5. All right. So f4, half a point, maybe, if you play like that. But actually, it's much stronger if you play like Wacky Hill is saying. Try to open up the game on the queen side. Black took on b3. We don't have to take back, right, uh, Wacky Hill? Exactly. Here we go. Pawn play again. We should just open up the game as soon as possible. 
One funny detail about this game is that these pawns were looking at each other for the next 10 moves. None of the players care to, to take or, or to take. They just left them there. So black uh, took on c4, knight xc4, threat knight d6, black played knight c6. At this point, somebody was saying d5 here. Somebody was saying d5, which also makes a lot of sense. This is another great move for white. You can play d5, but I think actually even stronger is bishop e2. It's about flexibility, you know, because if black uh, puts the bishop on e7, then we can push d5. On the other hand, if black puts the bishop on g7, we might consider, of course, knight e6 check. So it makes a lot of sense to wait a little to see what black is going to do with that uh, bishop. In the game, they didn't move. Yeah, bye, uh, Tori Chess. Thanks for showing up. So black played in this game b5 instead. B5, and uh, what did you play here? Exactly, Wacky Hill. Um, I guess Wacky Hill, it's, you're not Grandmaster Mamedov, no? Because you're repeating every move that uh, he played in the game. All right, Bishop takes d6. Please continue, Wacky Hill. Pawn takes, Queen takes. And that's why I wanted to show you this example, because I thought it was very impressive how White used all their pawns in order to open up the game. Uh, but still, Black resisted in this game. They played well. They defended in a very nice way. It looks like if Black already lost the game, but uh, strong Grandmaster Suleimanli didn't uh, give up this battle. Knight c5, of course. And uh, at this point, White uh, hurried to step up the pressure on the long diagonal. That's right. They brought in the Queen. And uh, we were speaking about uh, pawn play today. So anyone, what do you think White played here? I told you these pawns wouldn't uh, touch each other for a long time. Aha, they're just staring at each other. Yeah, you're right, Amazine. That's correct. Hit them where it hurts. Exactly, Hong Pao. You got it, L008. That's the right way to go here. We are playing for an attack. And we can see that black has no dark squad bishop. So safe to say uh, we have good attacking prospects here. Aha, great work by L008, Santos, Google Chess. So that's how we should continue here. Knight g4 was also interesting. If knight g4, maybe I can play f6. I'll give this pawn this on the house. I need to save my king. All right, uh, Hong Pao, how did you continue here at this point with the white pieces? Which was the strongest move? Exactly. f4 was played in the game. G takes f4 was played by black. Black really resisted well in this game. But uh, yeah, white uh, went on to win. One interesting thing about this game is that after queen takes f4, knight c4, Black found all the uh, only moves here in this game. But what White did in the end, usually we were waiting for some fantastic attack to, to come, right? But in this game, you can see that the bishop is attacked. So White just said, all right, let's go for an endgame. So they just took on d6 and they took on d6 and they had a much better uh, endgame here. Also, rook d1 is coming up and so on. White had a big advantage. You can see that the bishop pair is still very uh, strong here. The bishop pair is very powerful in this open position. So... Summing up what we have seen here, Black's king was stuck in the center. We should try to find a way in which we can open up the game, just like uh, David Anton in our first example today played f6. In this example, White uh, opened up the game on the opposite flank by pushing b3, and after c takes b3, no reason to take back on b3 when we can just continue to push with c4 and later on even with uh, d5. So that was a very pretty plan by White. They were punishing Black for leaving their king in the center, especially in closed positions, of course, it's very important to know how to use our pawns. So that's why such moves like b5, b3 are so important. All right, guys, I think that's it for today. Thanks a lot for joining in. Thanks to Chess Dojo, Chessable, and of course, USCS, a fantastic chess academy. Thanks a lot and see you next time.